What's up YouTube? Valentin Demand here, and today I have a new dub discussion video. This one is with Kele Pennypacker from Electroform, discussing the team's upcoming game Bird Trail, the features, the possibility of an alternative control mode to play the game without a VR headset, and of course, the gore, dynamic head damage, dynamic body destruction, and a lot more. So, without further ado, here it is. Hi, welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, my name is Caleb Pennypacker. Uh, I'm a developer and uh, the artist on Blood Trail, our upcoming VR game. All right, so first of all, what is Blood Trail? So it's a VR horror game, and in a nutshell, it's about a hired killer who is sent out to massacre a cult. Aha, uh -huh. that sounds pretty cool. So, uh, can you tell me first how you got to making the game? Because you mentioned you were making movies and uh, I don't want to hear about that, the history of your studio and all that stuff. Sure. Uh, we've made a, a couple of uh, uh, independent films, um, both of which in the horror genre. And uh, two years ago, uh, we decided to try our hand at making video games. And we made a, another game uh, in 20... It, we released it in 2017. Um, it was quite violent, but not uh, not necessarily a horror game. Uh, so, you know, we've been horror fanatics and 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 making movies for a while, and and it just felt right to uh, extend that and and try and bring a cinematic horror experience to uh, the video game platform. All right, so let's talk about the game itself now. So, what are the main features aside from gore in Blood Trail? So uh, we want to give the players an intricately crafted world um, filled with detail that helps to fill out the story and, and give them a sense of, of purpose and, and give the, the, the world a living feeling. Uh, we want the player to be able to use the environment to their advantage, things like hiding, you know, some stealth elements, perhaps using environment um, objects to kill the enemy at times. Um, we'll be bringing a melee combat system as well. Um, you can use your guns, um, rocks, found weapons. Um, and of course we also uh, will feature realistic gun mechanics. So the player will have to manually reload and reach into his or her pouch to um, to grab the ammunition and, and, and work the, uh, the guns. Right, yeah, so I did see uh, quite a lot of footage using the guns. It looks pretty awesome. We'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about the melee weapons. What kind of stuff will be able to use? Sure. Um, so uh, there are obviously the weapons uh, that you'll be using to shoot the guys with. You can bludgeon them with that. You'll be able to hit them with the pistol or the shotgun. Um, there are also, uh, you'll be able to pick up rocks and hit them or throw them, uh, as will they. So you'll find that the bad guys will also, though, as they run around, if they see a rock, they'll, they'll pick it up and throw it at you. So uh, it'll be up to you to, to either dodge it or catch it or uh, smack it out of the way. Um, they also have weapons that they'll attack you with. So as you progress through the um, through the, the, the levels, you'll find uh, weapons that they um, use themselves and you can, you can use them against them. Mostly um, things that they would have out on a, on, a, on a cult property, such as that hammers and knives and hatchets and things like that. That sounds fun. So tell me more about the setting and the story, about it, Dark Forest, the cult. Mm -hmm. So the game takes place in modern times and it focuses on a twisted and parasitic cult that lives in the forest in uh, the eastern United States. Um, the character that you play is a contract killer. He's a, a hired assassin, so to speak. He's not your typical hero. He's a very, very bad person. He has no remorse, no sense of consequence, and no fear. So he arrives at the outskirts of this enormous property with his pistol and his shotgun and proceeds deep into the forest with the goal of murdering everyone that he finds. So as the game progresses, the narrative is going to unfold 
uh, to reveal deeper connections that will weave the story together and um, provide uh, the player with that sense of a, of a solid narrative. Oh, that sounds absolutely awesome. I do love the part about the code, Merciless Killer. Mm -hmm. So would there be like some uh, choices to make in the game itself and the story that do have an effect? We do. I don't want to give too much away, but we do have uh, plans to present the player with, um, with a, a scenario toward the end that uh, they may be allowed to make a choice that dictates the, um, the outcome of the game. Okay, sounds pretty cool. And uh, one more uh, question I had in mind is, so as you mentioned, it's a VR title, but I guess uh, most folks watching, I know I don't have a, a VR headset, mm -hmm. but you know, would still want to get the game and uh, play around the gore mechanics. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is uh, whether there will be an alternative control option to play with mouse, keyboard, and monitor? Sure, that's a great question. So while I can't make uh, a promise on that, this is something that we are absolutely heavily considering. Uh, we want to finish the VR portion first before attempting to port it, but we'd love to give the experience to all gamers who are interested. So um, that's definitely very high on our list to do that. And fortunately, it's sort of a scalable thing in that, you know, depending on, on you know, how quickly things go or how much support we receive, we may be able to give the full experience and have essentially the same game just split into two different formats. Um, but at the very least, we're, we're definitely considering also perhaps creating a, a, a side mode like, like a, a defender or wave shooter thing that could be played on either format and allow um, other gamers on other platforms to, uh, to play with the Gore system. All right, yes, I do hope that you can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, to the fun, uh, juicy stuff, mm -hmm. the gore system. So we're going to talk about what you have now, what you're planning for the future, and let's begin with that glorious head damage. So what's going on there? Right now, the head has the capability to take severe damage in a number of ways. So each time you shoot it, you will be shooting a large chunk out of it. You could shoot it down to a mangled, bloody stump if you just keep on shooting it. So while we haven't technically implemented the complete removal of the head just yet, um, we're focusing on get, just getting that, that brutal, like realistic destruction down before we get into actually removing the head. But um, each shot will dynamically remove um, a piece of matter and will deform the shape of the skull. So each one of these damage models that you apply will compound with the others to create unique effects that will be different every time you shoot someone. So right now we only have the head damage uh, fully implemented on the guy, but the enemy that you see on screen is actually not our final character. He is, um, he's a proof of concept character and he looks very similar, but the final enemies will be, they'll have a wide range of outfits, more realistic textures and full body gore which includes bones and internal organs and everything. You'll also be also, able to... Uh, mm -hmm. So fully dynamic bodily destruction? Yes. Mm -hmm. We will allow the same uh, type dude, of damage. You, you absolutely have to get it uh, outside of VR. It has to be on PC, man. Yeah? It has to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trust me. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I, yeah. I, you're right. <laughs> so um, we, we're going to allow all the same damage that you see on the face to happen anywhere on the body. Um, there, you're going to be able to blow giant holes in the clothing as well, so you can see the the flesh under the clothing um, and the separation between the two. So um, again, we're we're also looking at dismemberment, but we want to finish the gore, the 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 uh, the more realistic gore mechanics before we look into blowing the limbs off, and maybe that'll be something we do in a future update, depending on how things go. But um, we're definitely planning on making this extremely versatile throughout the whole body. Um, and uh, with regards to the blood effects... Uh, yeah, just uh, one quick one before that. Mm -hmm. So uh, It's kind of funny, I actually talked about head deformation in the previous interview. And so I guess we'll now see some proper head deformation for throwing rocks, if they hit the head. Yes, we are 
Definitely going. So yeah. So actually, each each damage model is is completely um, scalable, I should say, uh, in that the it can be applied a very little bit at a time. So what we aim to have is when you hit someone with a rock or with uh, a uh, with your shotgun or, or a heavy weapon, um, multiple hits in the same spot will will start to deform the skull and break the bones beneath it. So it'll take a lot more effort. You might have to hit them five or ten times, but it will break. It, it will end up breaking the skull. And if you're going to beat someone to death in the game, you are going to have to hit them a lot. So uh, while it's possible, it, it it'll be uh, it'll be realistic and 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 uh, take some effort. <laughs> All right, it sounds awesome, man. Now let's get to the blood spilling. Uh, so right now I've seen you. I've seen the uh, initial response to the moment of impact. I've seen blood pools. So uh, what do you mm -hmm. have now, and what is uh, planned? Sure. So uh, first of all, we want to create just more assets for that. So the just more splatter patterns, different pools uh, of blood, so that you know um, there will be greater variation and more visual breakup when you're killing larger crowds of people. Um, if time permits, we would like to possibly make unique splatters for the walls that would allow dripping effects. Um, another thing we have implemented, which hasn't been seen in the in the trailer um, just yet, is on the bodies. Uh, I have simulated uh, using a fluid simulation software uh, blood stains that will pool out and appear on different areas of the body. So. Uh, one bullet may cause a massive, massive blood stain to soak into the clothing uh, over time. It's not uh, an immediate thing. It, it it takes a few seconds, but then it will seep out and, and kind of um, ruin their outfit, so to speak. Um, so we just want to create more of that stuff. Um, we also have plans to uh, add more uh, effects for the uh, damage as far as like more brains, more flesh, bits of bones, um, more particles, things like that to uh, to really sweeten the deal. All right, sounds awesome. So mm -hmm. I guess it's pretty basic, but whenever you see blood pooling, you'll see it stain wherever it lands, right? Yes, yes. All, all the environment objects should uh, stain with the blood when it pours out of them. All right, so let's get to the animation responses. I've seen the disabled state in trailers, so uh, tell me what do you have now and what are you going to add later? So the enemies in the game, we have simulated internal organs that will dictate how they respond when they're shot. So as with real life humans, they're both extremely tough and extremely fragile. So being as they're drugged and crazy, they may be able to take serious damage to their limbs and extremities before they actually go down. But a single well-placed shot to the torso might stop them for good if it's aimed uh, with a high degree of accuracy at uh, an, an organ such as uh, the heart or or, or the lungs or something like that. However, um, many times the shots will not be fatal right away. And as we've seen, they can be left cowering, sort of writhing around on the ground. And um, right now we're working on uh, a system where they can crawl away. Um, oh yeah, I do think it's like crawling away, leaving a blood trail. Mm -hmm. Yep. Name of the game. It yep. has to happen. Absolutely, absolutely is is uh, is the plan. Leaving a blood trail and and uh, <laughs> how appropriate, right? Um, yeah. Sometimes. And like maybe some interaction between uh, healthy characters and wounded ones. That's a great idea. You know, we hadn't thought of that, and uh, I think that's that's an awesome idea. We yeah, we don't see it happen all that much, and. Uh... Mm hmm. No, that's true, and uh, we we have been uh, considering uh, similar. Similar features in that um, if someone, if one of the bad guys dies uh, next to his friend, it might, he might uh, freak out or, 
or get scared and run away and, and react in that way. But I, I like the suggestion of, of them uh, tending to their fallen comrades. And, uh, and I think I'd like to see where we can go with that. Um, uh, another thing uh, that happens uh, is, uh, is occasionally they will find the resolve to get back up and keep fighting. So um, if you're not sure, it's usually better to execute them and put a few more bullets in them <laughs> to be better and safe than sorry. <laughs> I hear that, yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, so anything more you want to add? Um, well, we're just really excited to deliver this game. We've had uh, a great response from uh, the, the, the community who's seen the game so far. Uh, we're just huge fans of the genre and we, we, you know, I just, from, from, from my partner, Doug and I, we, we, uh, we just, we can't wait to, to deliver uh, the experience and we'd love to hear feedback. So, um, you know, you, if anyone wants to, you know, shoot us, a, shoot us a line and tell us what they think about what we've got going so far, uh, we'd love to hear it. Oh yeah, so where can they do that? Where can they shoot you line? So you can find us on Twitter right now at, uh, at Blood Trail Game. Um, you can contact us at uh, contact.electrovore at gmail.com. And uh, we're actually putting up a website really soon, and I will update you with that link once we've got that going. All right, I will have it in the description when uh, you send me. And the uh, final question, so what is the planned release date, if you have any? We don't have a planned release date. Um, and so, of course, we don't want to... Uh, to to promise anything there um with luck we would like to get it out this this year um but we'll definitely be updating you guys with that information when we have more uh available all right awesome so that's it thanks for joining me great thank you so much